So you've got low RP sets in your program and it feels effortless. You may feel fresh and have plenty left in the tank to try and push a little bit more. But the question is, is low RP work pointless? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to the Strong Ambitions channel. My name is Norman Chung and I am a powerlifting coach. If you're new to this channel or if you haven't already done so, please click like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on useful information on powerlifting. Now back to the topic. So today we're going to be talking about what low RP work means, the benefits and drawbacks, and how you can best incorporate it into your own training. Now, before we delve into the debate, we need to define what we mean by low RP work. RP obviously stands for rate of perceived exertion and it's a scale for rating the intensity and proximity to failure of a set of reps and obviously as well as a tool for rating the difficulty of a set it can also be used in a way to prescribe weights as well. So there's actually no textbook definition of what low RP work actually means so I decided to launch a survey on Instagram to find out what you guys think and 60% of you guys considered RP6 or lower to be low RP work. Now the first question that I'm going to answer is actually why high RP work is actually considered to be important for powerlifting. Now, in order to be able to understand this, we need to be able to understand some quick science on how increasing strength happens in our muscles. In powerlifting, we obviously care about getting stronger so we can lift as much weight as possible. And when we're performing a lift, our brain tells our muscle fibers to contract hard in order to be able to overcome this load in each of the lifts. Now, in our bodies, we have a neuromuscular system, which includes all of the muscles in the body and the nervous system or nerves that serve them. And in the nervous system, we have a central nervous system or CNS, which comprises of a brain and a spinal cord and a peripheral nervous system which branches out from the CNS. And within these structures, we have our nerve cells or neurons which connect to bundles of muscle fibers and these structures combined are called motor units. And in all bodies, we have various different sizes of motor units that range from small to large motor units. Small or low threshold motor units have a lower number of muscle fibers and large or high threshold motor units have a larger number of muscle fibers. Now, these small motor units are known to have more type 1 muscle muscle fibers, whereas these large motor units are known to have more type 2 muscle fibers. For strength, the type 2 muscle fibers are going to be more important as they produce most of the amount of force relatively, but they do fatigue quickly. So these type 2 muscle fibers are going to be responsible for most of your strength and size gains ultimately. So therefore, we need to be able to activate them. But how do we activate them? So we therefore need to be able to understand something called the Henneman size principle. Now, with Henneman size principle, it states that motor units are recruited in an orderly manner up based on their size with the smallest motor units being recruited first before we then recruit the larger ones. So if you're performing low intensity activities such as going for a brisk walk, um, a gentle cycle or if you're just picking something off the desk you're unlikely going to be able to activate any of these high threshold motor units. As the intensity of the task increases, larger and larger motor units start to be recruited in order to be able to handle the load and tension. Ultimately, this means that high enough intensity or RPE work is important in order to be able to fully recruit these high threshold motor units, which have these type two muscle fibers. If you are using slightly lower intensity weight, you may need to train with higher reps at higher RPE to really activate more of these larger motor units. Now, if you are using higher intensity weight, you may be activating a lot of these high threshold motor units from the first rep within that set. Now, if in a competition, our job is to perform a one rep max, which is an RP10 single, it makes sense that our training needs to be able to replicate this condition as much as possible, which is why you see a lot of powerlifters perform a lot of high RP singles, doubles, and triples. However, there are caveats to training with high RPE in training. So the most apparent problem when it comes to high RP sets, or at least too many of them, is the large amount of fatigue that it creates in the short and medium term. But why is this a bad thing? So too much fatigue can obviously restrict how much meaningful volume you can actually do in the short term. If programming includes too much high RPE work, long term this can potentially reduce the strength gains by reducing the overall stimulus that you can impose on yourself in order to be able to get stronger. The second point is that high RPE work is mentally demanding for you as a lifter. Although you might not be necessarily psyching up maximally, it does require a lot for you to bring about enough arousal for you to be able to complete high RPE sets. Long term, this can cause you to burn out and lose adherence, especially when it's very difficult to be able to consistently bring about this level of arousal to be able to hit high RPE sets. And the third point is, depending on where you are as an athlete, higher RPE work may potentially pose a slightly higher risk of injury as you are pushing yourself closer to the limit. So those are the problems with high RPE work, but what can low RPE work do for you? 
So we can potentially lower the RPE in a combination of the following three ways. So we can either cut the set short, uh, we can spread the reps out over more sets, or we can reduce the intensity of that load. So the primary thing about low RPE work is that it allows more room to recover and by accumulating less fatigue, which in immediate term can help you keep higher levels of work capacity for that session. And this can consequently increase the training stimulus for that session and long term can potentially give you higher rates of gains. The other feature of low RP work is that you can focus a little bit more on your execution and maintain good mental focus to be able to maintain that good technique. So here are a couple of interesting studies that actually show a potential benefit with training your sets with a further proximity to failure. So the first study is titled The Time Course of Recovery Following Resistance Training Leading or Not to Failure by Ricardo Moran Navarro. And the second study is titled Greater Gains in Strength and Power with Intraset Rest Intervals in Hypertrophic Training by Jonathan Oliver. So let's talk about this first study. Here, they had three groups of participants who performed three different training protocols at the same intensity. The first group did three sets of 10, where they were closest proximity to failure. The second set did three sets of five with half the level of volume as the first group. The final were given six sets of five with the same level of volume as the first group, but spread over more sets. And what the researchers of this study found was that after assessing the participants one to two days afterwards, they found that the three sets of 10 group was significantly more fatigued than the group who did six sets of five with the same amount of volume at the same intensity. So what this tells us is that the reps at the end of the set that are closest to failure produce a disproportionately lot more fatigue than the reps that you do earlier on in the sets. And this is obviously going to affect your performance in a short to medium term. Let's talk about this second study. So in this second study, they did a 12 week study with two groups of participants. The first group performed sets with traditional rests. So they did four sets of 10 with two minutes of rest between each set. The other group performed the sets that were split in half. So they did eight sets of five, but they had one minute rest in between each set. And what they found was that for the squat, there was a statistically significant increase in squat strength for the latter group, whereas an increase in the bench press was higher, but not necessarily statistically significant. So in the context of strength, what these two studies do support is the potential use of spreading your reps out over more sets in order to be able to manage neuromuscular fatigue. And it is worth noting that these are only just two studies. And when it comes to programming training sets, there are various other factors that you need to take into consideration consideration when it comes to programming. So low RP is not always the rule that you should necessarily take. So there are other reasons for incorporating low RP work outside of the use of just managing fatigue. One reason would be to use low RP sets for technique work. Technique work may include some variation of the main lift or movement that helps you coordinate yourself a little bit better for your execution on your primary or secondary days. So by having slightly lower RP work, it will be easier for you to focus a little bit more on changing your default movement and also managing proprioception and less focus on actually producing force. So here's an example of a prescription for someone who wants to improve the execution on squats. So you may choose an exercise like a 3-1-3-0 tempo pause squat at three sets of four at RP5. Just in case you didn't know, a 3-1-3-0 tempo squat means that there is a three second eccentric and one second isometric and a three second concentric portion of the repetition. And by keeping the RP low at RP5, that means that you as a lifter can focus a little bit more on balancing on your foot as opposed to just being able to push hard into the ground, especially if you are someone who, you know, might potentially go too far forward onto their toes. And another use with low RP work is the purpose of managing injuries. If you are dealing with an injury or have just recovered from an injury, or if you are someone that you consider to be prone to injuries, then implementing low RP work can be one of the many strategies that you can use to manage your training and your program. So when it comes to training to a closer proximity to failure, it is a potential risk factor for injuries as you are pushing your muscle tissue closer towards its own work capacity and even risking surpassing it. It's also important to know that there are multiple factors outside of managing set difficulty that can influence injuries as well. And outside of training set difficulties, you may want to consider changing up some of the movements that you've got in your actual program. It is important to remember that injuries, particularly overuse injuries such as strains and tendonitis, they often occur when the stress has exceeded the capacity of that tissue. And when you understand that principle, it makes managing those injuries a little bit easier. So ultimately having low RP work in a training program is going to be a useful tool. 
and understanding the time and place for them will probably give you more momentum in terms of your training progress. So now that you understand why low RP work may be used in a program, it's important that you don't deviate from that and go beyond what is actually being prescribed, especially if you are being prescribed low RP sets. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Please click like, subscribe and click the notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one.